Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so excited you're here with me today. We have a shaker card. We're going to use the Still Scenes bundle. This is a beautiful bundle from Stampin' Up! that's super versatile. And even though the stamp set is very Christmassy, you could use these dies for any time of the year. We're going to do some fun ink blending. I'm using Bermuda Bay, Night of Navy, and either Gorgeous Grape or Highland Heather. We'll know in a second. Um, and I'm going to speed this ink blending way up because it took me a long time. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could ink blend this fast? <laughs> so um, I, when I ink blend, here's some tips for you. You want to actually use very mild pressure on your ink blending and go over it again and again and again and again and again. So that is the trick to getting a really nice even blend um, and having your colors blend together beautifully. So as you can see here, um, it is pretty rough looking at the moment. Um, the colors don't really blend together great and you can see some uneven marks and stuff like that. But by the time I'm all done with this, it's going to be a beautifully ink blended piece. The key with ink blending is patience, which I am not a person who has a lot of. I admittedly am not a patient person by nature, although as I age, I've noticed I've gotten, I've gotten, that's not a word, I am getting more and more patient. So this is one of those things where I knew if I just kept going and kept working and kept going and kept working at it, I would end up with a beautifully ink blended piece, which I did. So you can see how beautiful that is. And honestly, you can just keep going and going and saturating this paper to the point that it's almost flawless. So this was good enough for me because I knew I was going to be cutting stuff out and adding a lot of things. So it didn't have to be super perfect. You weren't just going to be looking at this piece with nothing else on it. Okay, I'm using shimmer paint here. This is frost white shimmer paint. I'm putting it, um, using an aqua painter. And what I do is I just tip the bottle upside down when the lid is still on it. And then I, um, as you can see, I flick and tap from the um, aqua painter onto the base. So I'm just continuing to do that and then you have to let this portion dry before you can move on. Once this dries really, really well, you can heat emboss on it, you can add stuff to it, and it will not smudge or smear. Um, but you do have to let it sit and dry. You can heat set it. Um, I have found though that sometimes it um, like diminishes the opacity of it or something. It's like it makes it lighter. So I just always make a choice that it's something I'm going to set aside and wait to dry before I move on doing anything else. So you can see I resort to just dipping the um, aqua painter straight into the bottle <laughs> because I can't like I just want more and more and more and I sometimes don't know when to stop. So I finally decided I had enough splatters and I would be done and I was going for a kind of like a night sky that was snowing. Okay. This is a completely random side note. I don't even use this in this card, but I wanted to show this to you. So I used glimmer paper and sponges to create different color glimmer paper. So this is really pretty and I was wondering if I would still end up with kind of like a night sky if I did this technique on glimmer paper. So the thing I found is you really can't like rub the sponge across. You have to dab it and that you have to just kind of go over and over all the areas to get them to blend together. Um, they don't ever have as smooth of a blend as like the blending that I just did, but you have all this crazy beautiful sparkle. So I did end up making a card with this piece totally different from the card 
other card I made. So if you want to see a photo of it, you can go over to my blog at loveandstampin.com. And there'll be a photo of the card I made with this piece there. But it's really beautiful. It's so sparkly. And the video and photos really don't do it justice because all these little sparkles catch the light and it's just beautiful. The one problem with this is that it got glitter in my ink pads. And I did not think of that beforehand. So my resolution to that was to... <laughs> literally take um, paper towels and wipe the ink pads and that got most of the glitter off and there's still a little bit left on there and short of sitting and like picking them out I don't think there's much I can do at this point and um, so if you have a tip for me on how to get that glitter off of that ink pad after I did that such a stupid thing and yeah please let me know I think I have a fix for this too so that you don't have to end up with glitter in your ink pads because it's just a really awesome technique. Okay so we're going to cut the top part out here using a, a die then we're going to leave it in place so that I can tape it down so it will show through the back of the dome and this is where we're going to break into story time because now it's just kind of about me assembling the card. I will pop back and forth telling you little bits and pieces as we go. But this is just your standard size card base, four and a quarter by 11. Okay, I am voiceovering this video at 10 o'clock at night on Sunday night. You will be watching it in a couple of hours or sometime Monday or Tuesday. So you saw I put adhesive just in the dome area that I cut out and now I'm going to adhere this down. The dome will stay in place and I'll remove the rest. Okay. So um, what has been going on? Good Lord, the stories I have for you. Okay. If you're new to my channel, you've never watched before, I do card making slash vlogging. So I basically tell stories about my life and things that are going on whilst I make a card. And I try to give you card information and also share some funny, interesting stories about life and things in general. And so if that's not your jam, that's totally cool. You don't have to watch. I get it. Or mute me. That's fine too. Um, okay, so if you don't know this already... In California, there were like 800,000 people without power for multiple days. Pacific Gas and Electric, also known as PG&E, or now in my house known as PG and sometimes E, um, <laughs> decided that when we had heavy winds, that, and it's a dry climate, because California is very dry, especially um, more inland, that they would cut power, turn off the power grid, and this would prevent lines from being damaged and causing wildfires. Because if you have ever watched the news a day in your life, oh yeah, this becomes a disaster. So I'm using the snow puff paint, which is fantastic and amazing. But I didn't realize you have to really shake it. Otherwise, it just comes out super runny. Like how when you go to squeeze out ketchup and the ketchup just like the little gross juice from the top falls out of the bottle. Yeah, same same concept. So now I have to do a bunch of heat setting and apparently uh, camera adjusting. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Okay. So we're going to be going back and forth with that. So just ignore me coming back and forth. All right. You have to heat set the puff paint to make it puff up and look like snow. And I have to do this a few different times because I made a debacle with the runny stuff. So on Tuesday, we got notification that last Tuesday, we got notification that our power was going to be shut off beginning Wednesday at midnight. So like 12.01 a.m and that the power would remain off until the winds passed, possibly through Friday. Then we heard Saturday. Then we heard Sunday. Then we heard Thursday night. And this just kept going on and on. Meantime, we don't have power. And bonus, our cell phones quit working. 
So I don't know how all that ties together. I don't know what AT&T's deal is and why they can't provide cell service when there's no power. If somebody has an explanation for that for me, I'd, I'd love it. But that felt very scary. So it's one thing to be without power. It's another thing to have no communication. And that really freaked me out. And I was like, God, maybe we should have a landline. So then I find out that my grandmother, well, my husband's grandmother, um, does not have phone service and she has a landline. And I'm like, what the what? This is not okay. Like we cannot be without power and phone service. Craziness, which since then I have thought about these types of comments and I've thought like really first world problems. There's lots of people that live without those things on the daily basis. And I feel sad for them because it sucks and it's difficult. So um, I'm adding my sequins and then I'm going to add my dome. Okay, so the power gets shut off. So Thursday, so now we're in this like 36 hours trying to think of the course of all this happening. Okay, so so now we're at like a 36 hour mark on Thursday and everything, we had left the freezer closed in hopes that everything would stay frozen. And then we, we already started having stuff go bad in the refrigerator. Like you could smell it. But we left it closed because we figured there would be some stuff that would be fine. There were some things we took out and put in the freezer. I mean, in the um, ice chest. So we got ice chests, filled them with ice, and we put stuff in there like we were camping. So we had cheese, meats, things like that. Not like raw meats, like lunch meats um, and stuff like that in there. And I drove to Starbucks that was like a half hour away from us to get enough like Wi-Fi service to try to stay up on my email and kind of keep working. I had my child out of school. I had my sister-in-law's children because they were now out of school and she needed somebody to watch them because she still had to go to work. It was just crazy. Like the, there were so many things happening. So in the midst of all of this, hospice was supposed to come and meet with my grandpa for the first time and do his intake. That was supposed to happen on Wednesday. Well, he started having some, we'll just say tummy problems on Wednesday when the power is out. Now where my grandpa lives, if the power goes out, you have no water because he has well a well. So in order for the water to work, you, your well has to be able to pump, pump the water to the house. So that requires electricity. So for me, because I lived in, I live in town, um, I still had water, but I had no electricity. Okay. He had no water, no electricity and no phone service. Yeah that was a nightmare. And then on top of it, he starts having all these stomach problems and can't flush the toilet. You can catch up with what I'm saying here. So it was like a nightmare out there for my mom, my poor mom. And so she canceled the hospice intake appointment because she was like, I just can't handle one more thing. And I was kind of a turd and I was like, you know, you cannot cancel these appointments because they will help us. And she's very concerned with like, um, what they will think. Like if they showed up and everything wasn't like clean and stuff wasn't washed and it wasn't pristine and in the condition she felt everything should look. I'm like, they know what is happening. They know that life is a mess right now because all of us are without power. It is a nightmare. So, um, Anyway, long story short with that, we did end up meeting the hospice worker Saturday and she did the intake and all the different pieces are in motion now for grandpa next week. So that is a good thing. And I couldn't decide here what I wanted to do for the base of this globe. So that's why you're seeing different options. I ultimately decided to use the season's greetings base for my other card, which again, you can see over on my blog. And then I'm doing the little intricate one for this one. I felt like it went better. So, um, and I used that glimmer paper for this piece right here. Um, 
So that was the situation with him. The kids were out of school Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because there was no power. So our power came back on Thursday night late. Um, so almost 48 hours without power um, and phones, which now it sounds like that's not a big deal and it wasn't very long, but it felt really long. Then there were other people that I think there's possible. No, I think everybody now has power, but there were some people that didn't have power till Saturday. Um, my, my in-laws went out of town. They are on vacation. And so we kind of keep an eye on their place. So Friday, they still didn't have power. So we had to drive to their house, unload their fridge and freezer, get rid of anything that had like started to thaw and was funky. Um, and they lost everything in one freezer. It was just destroyed. So we had to throw that all away. We took five bags of food out of their house and threw it away. Yeah. My husband had to get a generator for their fridge to try to keep what was left good. So he had a generator um, that, well, his dad had a generator, had no gas in it. So he had to haul it down to the gas station, fill it with gas, bring it back. The thing weighed probably 150 pounds. And my husband is carrying it because it didn't have wheels. I was very concerned about that. I mean, he's a big burly guy, but I don't care. I tell him all the time, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. This is a difficult concept for him. So um, he hooked the generator up to their refrigerator and got it going. We have elderly neighbors that live like two miles from us. And their power was also off still through Friday. And so we had a friend who was so kind and brought us their extra generator. And we were able to take it to that neighbor's house and get their refrigerator hooked up to the generator because their generator started leaking gas. So we had that happening. And then... Friday evening, I fed lots of people at my house because even though a lot of people's power was back on, a lot of people didn't have food. So I had family members and friends over that needed a hot meal. I had multiple people shower at my house that day um, on Friday. So it was straight up a fiasco. And after this, my husband's like, we're buying a generator. Because and because we don't own one. And he said, PG&E is just going to keep doing this. So we're buying a generator. And then we are not going to lose $200 worth of food every time this happens. And, you know, I have had people say to me, well, they told you that they were going to shut power off. Yes, that is true. They did tell us that. And I think that the people that were saying that were, were not meaning to be rude. But, like... They didn't give us a ton of warning that the power was going to be shut off. And then we kept hearing different time frames. So every day we would have to be like, okay, is school going to be in tomorrow? And we would have to wait until 8 o'clock at night. So like 8 o'clock Tuesday night is when we found out there would be no school Wednesday. 8 o'clock Wednesday night is when we found out there'd be no school Thursday. 8 o'clock on Thursday night is when we found out there'd be no school on Friday. So you, it's like very difficult to plan. So it was like nobody really knew when this mess was going to end. And then here's the kicker. This is the best part of the entire thing. The whole reason PG&E did this, and I told you at the beginning, is because they're trying to prevent wildfires like the one that happened in paradise that burned down. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google paradise fire, California, California paradise fire. Um, it literally burnt the town to the ground. And so it was horrific and tragic. And pg &E has been sued now multiple times. Um, and so that's what they're trying to prevent. So there you go. There's my story. Um, there is more stuff to come. Trust me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click either image you see here. I hope you love the card. More photos on my blog. Click the circle with my face to subscribe. And if you want these products, shop with me at Shop Love and Stampin'. Talk to you later. Bye.